Good morning, everyone. Days are getting longer. Actually, can drive to work in the daylight now. So, we are continuing on this morning in the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 2. We saw last time that Pharaoh had determined that all the Hebrew male babies needed to be killed. So we pick up here in chapter 2 and we see that there's a baby born to a Hebrew family and we see that his mother kept him secret for the first couple of months of his life and then when she couldn't anymore she decided instead of allowing the world to decide what happened to her son she gave him to God she took the baby and she made a little raft put him in it took him down to the river and left him and we can think you know by the worldly standards we think well that's not a very responsible thing to do but it actually was because he was assured to be killed. So she could either make the decision, you know what, I'm going to let my son stay here like it is and die, or I'm going to trust God with him. I'm, you know, this is not a decision that was taken lightly. So she takes him to the river, leaves him, and we see that through that, God provided a home that says that he was taken into the family of Pharaoh because she found him by the river floating and took him as her own. Moses' sister saw all of this and as they were looking for someone to nurse the baby, his sister stepped in and said, I know someone that can take care of him. So she took him back to her mother to nurse until he was of age that he didn't have to nurse anymore. And he lived in the family of Pharaoh. He was adopted by the Egyptians. But he never forgot who his actual family was. Because we read on as years pass that he saw how his people were being abused by the Egyptians. In one instance, it, it angered him so much that he killed the abuser and hit him in the sand. We'll always see that Moses, throughout the reading, and I'll try to point it out, Moses was a man of justice. Now, while his justice was misguided in this instance, he was still a man of justice. That wasn't right. So he kills the Egyptian and he says he hides him in the sand. And the next day he comes out and he sees two Hebrews arguing and fighting with each other and he says why are you fighting with your brother we shouldn't do that and they turn and say to him say who are you a judge over us are you going to kill us and hide us in the sand and Moses realized that his sin had found him he couldn't hide from it there was no hiding always find you out. 
you know, there's a freedom with that if you if you think about it. You know, when I was a kid and I did things, I I, I would hide them. I, I'd like to say I only did it with a kid. You know, as I became an adult, I, I'd do things and I would hide them. You know, when I was a kid, I would obviously hide them from my parents. And as I got older, I would hide the things I did from society. Here's the thing, you can't hide them from God. And there's a freedom that comes along with that in that, you know, who do I think I'm kidding? I'm not. You know, Moses thought he was going to hide that body in the sand and no one would know. But what he didn't realize was that God saw the whole thing. He was right there with him. Now, he didn't help him commit the act. And he wasn't talking to him and speaking to him at this point. There was no relationship. But God still was there and saw what happened. God sees everything that we do. So, Moses' sin is found out. And he knows this will not be taken lightly by Pharaoh. So he flees Egypt. It says he goes to the land of Midian through the desert. And he comes on a whale. And there's sisters there watering their flock. He comes to drink and some men come in and try to wrongfully <clears throat> run the sisters off and it says that Moses stood up for them and run the men off. So they go back and tell their father what had happened. And he offers Moses a place to stay and a job. Shepherd. Moses from the royal Egyptian family. A prince, for lack of a better term. That's what he was. He goes from a prince to a shepherd. And we read down toward the end of chapter 2 that Moses was content. He had a wife his boss, for lack of a better term, had provided for him, was now his father-in-law. And he had a son. And Moses was content. Being a shepherd. He was content. He didn't, he didn't need to be a prince. He didn't need all those things. He was content. You know, when God leads us somewhere and leaves us there. It's obviously for a reason, but he doesn't just leave us there. What is he? What, what happened to Moses? He didn't just leave Moses the murderer out there in the desert. He provided him with a family. So much so that it says that Moses was content. He was happy where he was. Well, that only comes from our Father. Contentment can't be found in the world. Moses was educated, and I'm sure he was trained in lots of different things as being a member of the royal family. And we can say, well, you know, he wasn't really utilizing all that he had learned. He was a shepherd. But he was content. God provided him with that contentment right where he was at being a shepherd Moses was okay with that God will take us take care of us no matter how far away we are from our intended purpose until we're ready to assume that purpose why did Moses have to stay in the desert for 40 years as we'll see 
we talked about with Joseph, we're working on God's timeline here. So 40 years had to pass before it was time for the exodus to occur. But the other thing was is that Moses needed to learn a little humility. 40 years as a shepherd, I'm sure, is a humbling experience. Even though he was content, he wasn't very influential. And we read toward the end, at the end, that it says, and after the time had passed, the 40 years, that God remembered his children in Egypt. Now, we talked about this in Genesis. Remember doesn't mean that God forgot. It means that God is fixing to take action through his servant, Moses. Moses was a prince for 40 years, and now Moses has been a shepherd for 40 years. And now he is ready, even though, as we'll read in the next chapter, he doesn't think he's ready. He's ready. God has prepared him for the task ahead. Why is it that we think that we're not ready when God calls us to do something? think I just was thinking of this myself as I was talking about this we're ready because God called us to do it which means that he's going to be with us as we as we continue this we'll see that what God tells Moses you know I'm going to be with you that's that's the greatest promise that our father gives us I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you the whole time. So when he calls us to do something, we're ready. We may not feel ready. We may not want to be ready. But we're ready. We're ready. He was molding and shaping us the whole time to make us ready. So... My challenge to myself and my challenge to you is that when God calls you out to do something, and if you're his child, he will. He calls you out. Don't say, well, I can't do that. I'm not ready. Yes, you are. Yes, I am. We're ready. God bless you. I hope you have a great day.